so John, you're you're uh, you're you're watching that announcement like the rest of us this week from Gary Bettman and, and listening intently. What uh, aside from actually playing, which is the positive, what was the biggest standout fact that you heard in 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 that return to play plan that's been constituted so far? What what are you most excited about? Well, I think it's pretty easy for the Coyotes' perspective. It's uh, our involvement in uh, you know postseason play. So. Um, you know, it's been a long time since the Coyotes have been able to say that. Uh, it's something that was a goal of ours, albeit, you know, probably in a different format. But, uh, hey, we'll take it. And, uh, you know, I think it's something that internally here, uh, you know, in the market, our fans are extremely excited. I think, uh, you know, they want to get back to watching series hockey and having a chance to play for Stanley Cup. And, uh, you know, there's still some, some hurdles to get through. But I think uh, the league did a really good job of putting together a pretty comprehensive um Proposal and then a phase two uh, plan to try to continue to move towards getting back on the ice playing games. So, I mean, to be honest with you, the whole thing's exciting from my perspective. You know, I think uh, it, it's been a difficult uh, go for society here for a number of months and just to yeah, get the opportunity to get back to talking about hockey and, and a playoff series or uh, play in series, however you want to term it, I think it's uh, exciting for everybody. Outside of health and safety, which I think that we're all in agreement is like everyone involved, everyone listening, everyone watching, that's first and foremost. But outside of the health and safety, like what's the most concerning thing for a GM of a team as you take the next couple of steps? Yeah, you know what? It's been difficult to get back uh, past that that health and safety piece in the sense of uh, even when you get past the medical part, now you're talking about you know, ramping up players in a very short amount of time. So there's just been a lot of discussions, a lot of research, you know, trying to use science to guide us as best as possible in terms of situations where players have had a, you know, long uh, time off and then they're trying to get ready for a, you know, pretty intense series. And, you know, there are some things you can point to in terms of some, some work stoppages or some international tournaments and things of that nature. So, so trying to collect as much information and, and inform ourselves as much as possible to guide us, you know, because it's tough uh, these athletes and the way the game's being played. Um, you know, they train extremely well, but but the games play at such a high pace in the National Hockey League. So we got to try to find the best way to get these guys ramped back up in a safe manner. Um, you know, that, that that goes for the medical side, it goes without saying, but but also from a physical performance side. And I don't I don't think it's as easy as people would think either. So so spending a lot of time on that, I think that's a bit, a bit of most of my concern, I guess, for the last week here or so. John Chaika, GM of the Arizona Coyotes here on Tim and Sid, kind enough to uh, give us some of his time. Um, uh, whenever phase two, and hopefully early next month, which is just days away, whenever phase two gets going here, uh, John, I, I understand part of phase two is it, it, you don't have to be a part of the club to use a club's facilities. If you are in the city, there you are allowed to use those facilities. Has Austin Matthews and Frederick Anderson... Uh, have they extended a hand and said, can we get in? Have, have other teams uh, gotten, t- or other players, pardon me, that aren't Coyotes approached you about availability? How does that work? Yeah, so I, I think um, really everyone's kind of turning it, turning it as like a return to training or a return to get back to playing. Re- really all it's about is just getting a, a safe place for, for our guys to be able to come and, and try to, you know, get some physical activity in, you know, hopefully get back on the ice, which, you know, a lot of them, they haven't been off the ice for this amount of time, but uh, that, that's really what we're trying to do and accomplish. And it's, it's certainly voluntary. So, you know, uh, I, I haven't had any players uh, reach out to me that are in Arizona other than our own. We've got a number of players here. I don't, I don't know if it's guys who wanted to stay around for the weather. Or, you know, a lot of guys have a permanent residence there. So, so we've got a number of our own players, but uh, to date I've, I have yet to have anyone reach out to me um, to skate at uh, at our facility. So, so I haven't really dealt with that. You know, if, if I if it that came along and be more than willing to uh, accommodate that and, uh, and and you know treat them like uh, we would any of our own guys, which is just again the health and safety piece to try to get these guys um, you know back back to their their way of life. You know, they're athletes. This is what they do. They want to get back to training and skating and doing these things. And if we can help facilitate a safe way of doing that, we're more than happy to do it. John Chica joining us here on Tim and City's the GM of the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, it's interesting. I, I, I want to follow up a little bit on my previous question because I know you're talking about science helping you get guys ramped back up as quickly as possible with it being safe to them. Uh, I, this might be an ignorant question, but I'm okay with learning. 
does no fans or a five game series or the possibility of a quarantine, like, can that alter data modeling or add variations to what you and your staff might be looking for from your roster? Well, yeah, so, you know, it's a, it's a complex question. Yeah. Um, you know, to get a little bit more detail, I think, you know, I've spent a lot of time talking to the, the German soccer league and what they're up to. And, and, you know, to some of the premiership as well, as they start to ramp back up. And the one thing that they've told me is that, you know, it's a, uh, it is definitely a different animal playing in front of no fan, you know, mentally. Uh, so, you know, any, any discussions we have with players or, or uh, if we're trying to get them prepared, um, you know, to having those discussions and, and again, you can't understand it till you feel it, but, but having them understand that, that that's going to be the case, it, it's definitely a different feel. So I think there's not much that we can do in terms of modeling or, or adjusting for that type of an environment, but, but certainly the psychological piece of it is it's going to be a challenge, but I also think it's going to be an opportunity for some teams. And uh, I think it's going to be those guys that are really intrinsically motivated that want to go out and uh, compete for themselves and their teammates and, and uh, know that their fan base is watching on TV. I think those are the guys that uh, will really play well. John Chaka, GM of the Arizona Coyotes here on Tim and Sid. A lot of players, John, are of the opinion after the play-in round, the best of five play-in round, to, to keep the integrity of the cup, it's got to be best of seven the rest of the way. I don't know if the league agrees with that. I don't know if you agree with that. Time could be an issue. What would you like to see format-wise in the two rounds after the plan? What, what makes sense to you? You know, I, I think it's... if you're. To, I'll leave that to the return to play uh, committee for sure to, to discuss and decide. If you're asking my opinion, I... I, I could see both sides, and I think it's really going to be about factors outside of uh, what would happen in a perfect scenario. I think in a perfect scenario, obviously, you'd like seven. But, uh, you know, in, in reality, in practice, what we're dealing with as things evolve, um, you know, it might be different. And, uh, you know, for me, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not looking at any of these variables and, and really being critical of them because I think, you know, everyone's just trying to do the best with what, what we have in front of us. And I also think that the ability to do our best and then come back and play I think it's going to make for the most entertaining hockey we've seen in a long time. I think guys are, you know, chomping at the bit to get back and play. I think, uh, you know, the speed of skill of the game is at a high enough level that it's ever been. And, uh, you know, there's going to be some wide open hockey to begin with. I just don't think there's any way to get around that. I think that's going to be fun and exciting for fans that haven't watched a lot of hockey and it'll be, you know, I think watching in, in record ratings. So, um, you know, I think you put all those things together, the format to me, yeah, well, we can debate it one way or the other. I think uh, they'll, they'll make the best decision, and, and we'll, we'll just show up and play. I think that's our role. I think a lot of folks are, are agreeing with the wide-open aspect of that hockey, which makes goaltenders even more important. And Darcy Kemper uh, was on a reel before he got hurt. Uh, Brian Burke, who's going to join us next, said a couple days ago that he was the best goalie in the league for the first half of the season. Do you feel like this kind of format could really benefit you guys because of having a guy like Darcy Kemper? Yeah, I, I think goaltending is always, uh, you know, a great equalizing factor. So I think for, uh, you know, as we got Darcy and, and Antti Ranta, I think they both perform extremely well over the past couple of years, and, and they're guys that can win the game. So I, I definitely feel like, uh, yeah, we're positioned well, but I also think that you look at every single series, and, and uh, um, yeah, I don't think every league could say this, but you look at 24 teams in every single series, I certainly think it's uh, – all of them are going to be very compelling. Uh, I think unless someone's got information that I don't have, they're all going to be very close series. They'll be very competitive. And I have a difficulty understanding which one would be, or who should you know, be the favorite in some of these series. So I think it's going to be uh, good hockey. And yeah, certainly goaltending and timely goals will be a big part of it. Do you feel in Darcy you have arguably the most underrated goalie in hockey? <laughs> You know, he's a late bloomer. Um, you know, he, he had some early success in his career. Uh, he went through some trials and tribulations. I think that made him stronger and better. And, uh, yeah, yeah, for the last, you know, 18 months, he's been as good as there's been out there. So, uh, he had a little setback due to injury, but that, that, that can happen. Otherwise, yeah, he stopped the puck at a very, very elite level. And uh, not only that, he's been a leader for us. And uh, to have him, like I said, has been a huge competitive advantage and, and certainly – I don't, I don't think Antti Ranta, I mean, he's got a career 920. It's very difficult to find guys like that. So really impressive. 
John Chica joining us here in, on Tim and Sid. And I know that the return to play committee has a, a, an unbelievable task in front of them. Do you believe, though, there could be a competitive advantage if uh, a team were to be named a hub city and have their team playing on their home ice? You know, I think it's it's possible. I know it's been discussed. Uh, like again, I, it's one of these things where the scenario has never occurred. So there's not a lot of information to know whether or not. I, I think you know. I think Gary probably made a good good point about um, you know if, if teams are playing at their hub cities, then they won't be at home. You know, I think that logically that that could potentially be an issue. But obviously, the league's thought of that as they have with most of all, all things. And uh, I, I don't, so I don't think it would pose too much of an issue. There's no fans. So you're not getting that that uh, advantage. Yeah, I think in a perfect world, you wouldn't have them playing at their their hometown. But again, I wouldn't I wouldn't be a guy that would be uh, too overly concerned about that aspect. If it's if it's the healthiest spot and it's the best setup for everyone, I think that's where we should play. John, when these games eventually get played, under normal circumstances, you're in the press box. No one can hear you. This could be different. <laughs> uh, what is walk like? Honestly, take us through what watching a game with John Chica is like. Like, I don't think you're 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 not Cam Neely, but I mean, I, I'm sure you're a passionate <laughs> guy. What's uh, how 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 careful do you do GMs now have to be at uh, getting a little colorful uh, up in the press box when it can echo down a lot easier in the hub cities? Yeah, yeah, Cam might have to tone it down for some of those. Uh, those are pretty epic. But, no, I, I, I definitely don't uh, rise to that level. Not that uh, there's any. I mean, everyone's different, right? But uh, I, I have passion for sure. Not, not I'm, I'm more uh, uh, reserved. I would say in my my reaction. But but look, I mean, you spend your entire life trying to build this thing up and 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 make a lot of sacrifices and dedicate a lot of your time to it. So. Um, certainly those reactions are warranted and, and I'm sure they'll happen to, to a lot of guys, but uh, it, it'll take on a different dynamic from up in the in, uh, uh, empty arena in the press box. <laughs> Hopefully the coaches can't hear us sometimes. That, that wouldn't be good. And other GMs. Yeah, and other GMs, exactly. Yeah. Um, uh, Cause you guys aren't that far apart really in that press box. I don't know if people know that, but that's true. Go ahead. Timmy. Yeah. No, I was just going to say there might there might be eight of them. There might be you know yeah, there might be a few true. of them, not just it's two. True. <laughs> um, John, uh, just a few more things before we let you go. I really appreciate your time. Uh, the first is whenever we have you on, I uh, I am contractually obligated to ask about Taylor Hall. Um, any anything new on that front? I know these are these are weird times, but that's uh, that is one of these stories kind of hanging in the ether. What can you tell us about that? No, I mean, as, as it relates to Taylor, I think I'm excited for Taylor. And this is uh, an opportunity for him to play in the postseason and, and play in a series. And, and you know, let's, uh, you know, the reality of it is a lot of careers are defined in, in these types of formats. And, uh, you know, he, to date, he hasn't had the opportunity to play in these types of games that, that he would like. But uh, this is a huge opportunity for him in his career. And uh, I think he's a guy that, like we talked about, you know, there'll be some wide open hockey early. I think, uh, it's going to be close games. They'll be back and forth, and I think he's a guy that can be a difference maker. So certainly, why we acquired him, and and uh, believe he's, he's an elite player in the league that can uh, move the needle in terms of results. So, so I'm excited for him. You know, I've talked to him and, and kept in touch. Again, it's one of those things where uh, there's nothing you know new or imminent. You know, we continue to have some discussions. I think both sides are are uh, you know very analytical and methodical in how we approach things, and, and the reality that there's still a lot up in the air. You know, certainly probably doesn't help in terms of progress, but that doesn't mean that the end result will be different. I think, you know, Taylor is a guy that we have a lot of respect for and, and think he's a top player. And, and uh, you know, we hope that through this process, we can continue to show him that we want, we're committed to being a top team. And I know that that's what he's looking to, you know, commit himself to. And, and, and finally, um, again, we didn't get a hard date on the draft and, and Gary was smart about that because we just don't know how this is going to play out. If it, it feels as though it'll be after this playoff is done and you guys can deal. And that was one of my fears as the conversation went along was a draft before the end of this season where really there's no trading and you can't have cap relief and you can't make that's that did not appeal to me in any which way. Are you satisfied the draft may happen? The window might be small, but the draft will happen in a more natural state. Yeah, you know, I think the league did the right thing in terms of uh, exploring all the options available to them. I think that uh, that's what they have to do, and that's their job. So one of those alternatives was was to do something early, and I think they uh, 
they looked at it and, uh, you know, kind of made a list of pros and cons on both sides and followed that, I guess, you know, get some feedback and look at different things. And certainly how this, everything's evolved, I think, you know, it makes sense if we can preserve the right to make deals, like you said. Um, you know, it's pretty material uh, for our, our franchises and, and how we're able to operate. So, so yeah, as a manager, uh, clearly as a manager, uh, that, that, that decision is helpful and makes a lot of sense. You know, having said that, we realize as managers, there's other, you know, interests and business interests and TV and things like that that, you know, are also very important. And, uh, yeah, I think the league is just trying to find that balance there. And, again, I think they, they did with this solution. So, so, yeah, we're satisfied. Listen, uh, the last time we talked to you, we had no idea when we'd be able to talk hockey again. So it's kind of cool to be able to to break down a matchup, and we wish you uh, the best of luck and uh, the ability to further talk hockey down the road as you guys uh, prepare to lock horns with the Predators. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Stay safe. You too. You too. You too. There's John Chaik of the uh, Arizona Coyotes who will take on the Nashville Predators in the six versus 11 matchup if and when we get back to hockey. I think 